Today I'm going to be working on a little Toro S200 snowblower. It's been uh, kind of mild winters around here the last few years. We really haven't had much snow, so there's actually a lot of snowblowers that have been sitting, oh hell, two to three years. Um, this one is probably just needs uh, gas dumped out, changed, and carburetor rebuilt. But we're going to get started on this thing here today. To cover off of this thing first and get in here and we can see what this gas tank looks like. I can already tell by the smell of the gas and the look of it how dark it is. It's two cycle, but there looks like most of the gas is probably evaporated out of it. So we're going to probably have to clean up the uh, gas tank here, get some fresh gas in it. Nice long extensions come in handy when you got bolts underneath all these covers and stuff. You don't want to pull off all the covers. You can get a longer extension and get down in there. Before I do that, I'm going to get something to dump this fuel out into. Old flower vase there I use. Works good for getting out, get all this stuff out of here. Well, they didn't put any extra gas line on it, that's for sure. Got just enough to get to the carburetor. Trying to do this without taking that back cover off until I know for sure I need to rebuild that carburetor or at least clean it up. I'm going to try to get this off of here without spilling too much gas on the floor. I think I can tilt it enough that it'll... I think we're about 50-50 on this if I had to guess. I know it's not that much, but there's a lot more oil showing in there than what I would expect to see. I think we get some fresh oil and gas mixed up for this thing. We might just be surprised here. I mean, it smells a little bad, but it ain't too hateful. I don't see anything in that tank other than gas and oil. Alright, we got that tank emptied out there. We'll get this thing back on here. Really just wanted to pull it off there in case it had sediment or anything in the bottom of it, but there's really nothing in there that I can see. I tell you what, I would have put an extra inch on this line for sure. Cutting costs is one thing, but boy, that's really cutting corners making that line that short. And I don't think it's original, so somebody, maybe it's just what they had, they didn't have enough to make it any longer. enough to hold it on there anyway. Guess if you put it on the carburetor last and had that back cover off it wouldn't have been too bad but going in this way you ain't got much room.
a lot of times if I've some of these the hose is actually exposed on the back you can put a shut off on them and it helps prevent this from happening but you can put that shut off on there and you can run the gas out before the season ends and then before you start them back up you know even if it's got quarter or half tank in it you can fill it off with fresh fuel and as long as the carburetors don't get stopped up most of the time that's all you have to do to get them running again is just put some fresh gas in them turn the fuel back on you know unless it's been sitting for a really long time that's that works most of the time kind of learned my lesson on my last video too and turned my heaters off and everything it's kind of cold today but wanted to make sure the heater noise wasn't going in the background like it was the last time I did a video here I'm gonna try to learn from my mistakes here I'm sure you're saying I could have done this without taking this tank off, but I really just like to completely dump them out, turn them sideways, make sure there's nothing hiding down in there that could be stopping the fuel up. And the best way to do that is just pull it off and inspect it really well. That way you can check it, make sure it doesn't have any cracks or anything in it either. I mean, it wasn't leaking, but now I know. This is just tightening down into a metal bracket with plastic off of the tank, so don't over tighten it. If you're new to this kind of stuff, that's probably the thing I see most new people doing more than anything is tightening everything down like a head bolt on a Mack truck. And it will cause you more problems than it will ever solve, that's for sure. three bolts in this so even if one of them vibrates loose it ain't gonna go anywhere I don't want to do it all right what I'm gonna do just hit this thing with a shot of starting fluid primer bulb seems to be doing its job Choke linkage is hooked up. I replaced on and off switch in it. Doesn't look original. That used to have, when these are new, they've got a little turn switch. Should work fine. Somebody's replaced it with a little toggle switch. But we can get a little shot of starting fluid down in there. We'll try to see if this thing fires up. There you can kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about down in there with that hose is just long enough to make it over there to that tank back to the carburetor. at least going to fire. I'll dump a little bit of fuel in there. Now I believe this is a 32 to 1. I've got some 40 to 1 here and we'll try that out if that works. We'll mix it up a little bit stronger. These little cans, way expensive to buy them. I have bought them before, but I pre-mix my oil and then just fill them back up. They come in handy. Instead of trying to use a big can on something like this, weed eater or snowblower or something. 
cans like that just makes it easier to transport around and use. All right, let's see if this thing's got any life without any starting fluid first here. Prime one to four times. I think eight ought to be enough. that's good enough I really think it was just old dirty fuel I don't think we really had to do anything more than that we'll get the right fuel mix in it here all the uh, augers look good full start rope looks good everything else I can see about it I think we're good to go now I'll usually take these outside and pressure wash them off and get them cleaned up but it is so cold out right now that my water hose is all frozen up so I really don't have that option right now this is about as basic a design of snowblower as you can get I had another one of these I picked up earlier in the season almost identical except it had the electric start on it which if these things are running good the electric start is really worthless honestly because uh, they start so easy when they are running correct well, the cover isn't going all the way on there so I'm in a different position than when I started these videos I'm doing now are really just kind of to hone my skills on uh, doing videos and editing and trying to keep up with the camera as well as keep track of what I'm doing. So like I said in the last video, I will learn as I go. But hopefully you can learn something here. Um, one thing is what I would recommend if you don't have a shut off on these things make sure that you turn or run the fuel completely out you can flip them upside down too uh, it's two cycle engine so there's really no oil in the engine to run out uh, take the cap off and just flip it upside down into something drain it out um, store it with no fuel in it and just run it until the motor dies that way when you start it back up the next season you can put fresh fuel in it you won't have any fuel at all but i would recommend uh if you don't shut off the fuel and you don't drain it start it up once during the summer and just let it run and then before you try to start it the following season get some fresh gas um in this case oil gas mix and that'll help keep you from having this problem but i believe we're done with this one that's a simple fix covers all back on nothing interfering I don't know if we'll need a choke or not here but we'll try this one more time that's really all there is to one of these little Toro snow blowers I mean there is no throttle on them there is nothing else to really adjust um, I'll take it outside here and try to let it run, but I think I'm going to wrap the video up. That's about all I got on this one. One thing I would like to add here before I close this video all the way out, if you found any value at all in this video, go ahead and hit the subscribe button there. 
and hit the little bell next to it. That way you'll be notified anytime I upload a new video. I know the last two videos I've done have been pretty basic, rebuilding the starter and basically flushing out a fuel tank. But as I get more comfortable with the video, I will start doing more complicated videos, stuff you'd probably be more interested in. Uh, this really has just been more to get me familiar with the camera and how that's going to work and get comfortable being on camera. Once I figure that out, we'll figure out all kinds of other stuff. A lot more complicated stuff. But anyway, until next time, thanks guys. Appreciate you sticking around.